Hey, welcome back everybody, this is Anthony. Today, after this video, you will be able to read from your Google email account and display your emails in your website, something like this. So these are real emails that are pull pulled from my Gmail account. And where we left off last time was it looked like this. So if you have not seen the last episode to see where we're at in our code, you may wanna catch up and just kinda of copy that over and, and then you can continue here. But uh, basically what we've got is we've got identification that the, the permissions have not expired that we just spit out just to test. We've got our message ID that we're reading. So they actually just read this in real time. We've got our message bodies here um, and it's just looping through 10 different messages of mine. Now, if you notice, it says null for some of these and we're gonna kind of go into detail on why it's doing that and how we can overcome that. But in the meantime, let's just kind of recap really quick that this loop is what's making this happen. So this loop in the gmail.php file is a continuation. Like I said, this is where we left off. But the first thing we have is message with ID is printed out to the screen. So we say message with ID. And then we say message get ID, and that's the ID right there. Immediately after that, we have the, the exported data which is the actual contents of the message. But if you notice, it's encoded, right? So we'll need to decode it and we'll need to display it. It's not hard to do, but like I said, there's a couple scenarios that we're dealing with because we've got some nulls here too that we have to work through. And this will kind of explain how to fix that. So let's start with not only just showing you the code, but how I was able to come to the, the answer, come to the solution. I went to users messages get, I went and copied that and put that into the Google machine and basically just put Gmail API at the end of it. And it brought me to this page here, which shows me how this method works, what it returns and everything. So if you notice, you've got your parameters, which we've passed already. If you scroll down, you'll see here that the response body returns an instance of message. So we know that this is an instance of message here on the screen and the message contains all of this. Now, what we're interested in finding out is the actual data within that. So we already found it in the last video, but this just shows how. And if you go a little bit further into this, you'll find that there is a, a way to access these using, using methods as well. So we're gonna do that. And then we're also gonna handle both of the scenarios that uh, I was talking about before. So let's look at the payload. The payload is something that we are interested in here. So let's go to the payload, which returns a message part, as you could see from the last screen. And so here we've got parts, which is an array. You can see parts is an array with multiple subscripts. And in this case, it's this here, which is parts. But the first one on my list here was null, which means to me that when I say parts one, on that first message that this is null, but I'll bet you that the body is not. And this is how Google has theirs organized. Ideally, they would just have them all in one area, but they don't. And I know there's a way to make it that way, but they, they haven't done it that way so that you can just call, you know, get message or get body or get data just one, one way. But it, it depends on the type of message that it is. It's like if it's the mime type or, or whatever. Um, they'll give you a part or they'll give you just the entire message. So we need to handle both of those scenarios, whether it's got the body or it's got the parts. And so that's what we're going to do now. So if we look at this loop here, we've got, we'll keep printing this out for now, but below that, we know we want the message, but we've got the two scenarios we have to deal with. We've got if it's the body or if it's got parts. So we're going to say if, um, Actually, you know what, let's let's make it variable and we'll call it parts and that'll make it a little bit easier to handle here. So we'll say if we'll say parts equals, let's say message and then we'll say get payload. And the reason why I'm saying that and I'll show you here in a sec um, is because there are ways to access these without actually just calling the, the individual variables themselves. So if you look at the bottom left side of the screen and you scroll down, uh, you'll see PHP client library reference, click on that. And that will take you to a page which has a ton of information, but at the same time, that ton of information doesn't really go into detail, too much detail about 
how to use it. So I'll help you out through that. But for what we're looking for today, you can see we've got users messages. If you just look over here where it says users and messages resource, and you click on that, you'll see that there are several met methods available. The first one here that we're interested in is get, which we've already, we got. We can see that it returns an instance of this. So we'll click on that and see that there's a bunch of other methods below that. So that's where the get payload is available. You can see there, and that'll return the payload, which is the same as just calling it directly, basically. And now below that, you can see that the payload itself is returns a message part. So let's click on that. And the message part has its own methods available to it as well. So you can see, I can say get parts, but the only way that'll return something is if there are multiple parts, all right? So that's where our if statement matters. So let's just go back to this if statement that we started here a minute ago. And so we're gonna say if the count of parts, so if that array that we're hoping we have is greater than zero, if the count of parts is greater than zero, then we're gonna say that the data equals and then we're going to just kind of navigate down that path. And we'll, we'll fix that here in a sec. Otherwise, and it looks like the first email that we have over here is null. So that means that there are no parts. That's So we're going to fall down into the second, the else, basically. Then we're going to say that the data equals something else. Okay. So the what, what is it going to equal? And that's what we're, we need to figure out. So we know that if there are parts that this is going to give me something here because we've already shown that here so this is what it gives me so let's just put that there so we're going to say if count of parts is greater than zero data equals that and let's use some of these methods that we were just looking at so we'll say get payload and then we'll say get parts one and then we'll say get body and then we'll say get data all right and then below that we've got the scenario in which there are no parts all right um and actually let's look here again we've already identified parts as being something that we're going to use so parts is message get payload get parts so let's just replace this with that so now it's shorter same thing and then we'll say else data equals and let's find out what we need to get so we've already identified that a couple screens back here let's see how far we need to go that it's either going to return parts or it's going to return body so get parts is what we've got here and instead of that, let's just say, um, we'll say message. Get payload. And then we'll say get body. Let's try that because if we say get body, let's just kind of follow along here. We have two options, get body or get parts. Here we say get parts. And here we say get body. Now the body is one layer deeper in this one than it is here because there are no parts. That's that's kind of the difference that we're looking for here. So the data is gonna be in one of these depending upon what type of message it is. So instead of that, let's just comment this out so we don't lose the structure. And we'll say echo pre var export, and then we'll say data and see what we get. And this may or may not work. Um, but if it doesn't, we'll just kind of work through it and get it to figure this out. Okay, there you go. So now you can see I've got message with ID. I've got information here. Okay, so I've got the data that I can grab. Um, and then on this one, I've got just the contents of the message. So it looks like for this scenario, I need to actually grab the data. So here I've got get body still. So let's let's get the data and see in addition to the body, and then see what we've got. All right, there you go. So now we're displaying the same thing as before, but we don't have 
the individual nulls. So that's resolved. And next thing we can do is we can just take this and decode it, this data and decode it. So, so let's do that. So we're going to say um, there's a couple of characters that we need to replace. So we'll say string replace. And then we're going to replace the dash with a plus sign in our data. And then the second thing is we're going to replace the underscore with the slash. And then we'll say out. All right. Now, the last thing that we can do is we can echo out our decoded message, which is going to be, uh, let's do base64 decode, and then we'll say out, and then just see, see what we've got. Fun, fun. We are running low on time. All right, there you go. So now you've got all of the messages here. Apparently I got a new one, Meetup, uh, since we started the video. But all of the messages, messages are displaying. So let's close this out with just cleaning this up a little bit. We've got random echoes and prints and things in different places. So, and then this also returns, which, so that, that's kind of messy. But uh, right now we don't really need this anymore because we know that it works. We don't need to echo this. We could actually, let's say, um, call this DEC, we'll say decoded messages, so you know what it is. Decoded MSG. And we'll paste that under the return. And what we're doing is we're going to create an array and we're going to add to that array. And then we'll return that array back to our index. So here, let's instantiate the array by saying equals array. And then over in index, we will, instead of echoing out the array, we'll echo out, actually we'll, we'll assign something to that. So we'll just say out equals go. And so now we know that out is gonna be the array that I just returned from Gmail. So now I can loop through each of these outs as, for each out as, uh, we'll say DISP for display, just make something up. And now we can echo out DISP. All right, so now we're gonna move over the Gmail and the index. And then let's just see if it displays pretty much the same thing without this. Yeah, so there you go. So that is it, that's how this works. And you can play with this however you want. There's a ton of information out here that will explain how to do more than just read your messages, um, especially if we're talking from here. You can send messages, like send. Uh, you can read, you can change threads. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can add labels, remove labels. And it all just starts with this basic framework here that I just have for you guys. So feel free to comment, question. I'm going to make this available to the public as well, all of this code. So I will drop a link to that as well. Um, but thanks for tuning in and you guys have a good day. Bye.